Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady, where we share stories about folks that are mistaken for employees by irate customers. And 4 awesome stories are here, so subscribe, hit the like button and here we go. The first story is, my dress shirt got me fired and almost kicked out of a college club fundraising banquet. This story takes place at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor during the 2015-2016 winter season. My childhood best friend invited my girlfriend and I to come visit him in college for a weekend. He moved into an apartment-style dorm by North Campus at the beginning of that school year. Courtyard for those familiar. His apartment had some space in the living room, which made it easy for people to come and visit and stay overnight. The trip itself was amazing. We caught up on a lot of lost time, toured the school, downright beautiful by the way, sorry not sorry Michigan State, went out to a couple of places on Liberty Street, got wasted at a couple of house parties, my girlfriend had a blast, and we even bought some Michigan hoodies as souvenirs at the den store. I only wish I tried harder in high school, so I could have gone there for engineering. But I digress. The main reason why we came to visit was to attend a fundraising dinner for the Michigan Polish Student Association. My friend and I are Polish, we both were part of Polish student clubs at our schools, and we would march together during the Chicago Polish Independence Day Parade every year. This particular year, his club reserved a room at the Palmer Commons. It looked like any typical banquet hall filled with tables, a couple of projector screens, and a DJ booth, with a big dance floor in the middle. The dress code for the event was formal. Dress shirt, pants, shoes, belts, and ties. I decided to wear a black shirt with thin white vertical stripes, black pants and a black belt, didn't care for a tie. People sat down, the club leaders welcomed everyone, talked about the club, school involvement, thanked and honored key contributors, presented the charity they were fundraising for, blah blah blah, and then everybody clapped. Throughout the event, servers brought out meals and water to the tables, for guests to enjoy, while they were pretending to pay attention. At some point, my girlfriend noticed that all of the servers just so happened to be wearing black dress shirts, with thin white vertical stripes, black pants, and wait for it, black belts. You can probably guess where this is going. She got my attention, pointed out the matching outfits between me and the staff, and we laughed it off as some funny coincidence. Someone at our table even made a joke that I should get back to work and take their dirty plates back to the kitchen. We left it at that and didn't think much else of it. For context, there were maybe 20 to 30 plus staff members working around the room. Big event, maybe 200 plus guests. Most staff were students themselves, working part time to fund their college shenanigans. Apart from the 10 to 15 servers that had assigned tables to serve food to, the majority of the staff collectively handled water jugs, bus tables and cleaned wherever needed. I doubt they paid enough attention to know everyone working that night, and given the extremely unlikely odds that I was wearing the exact same outfit as them, made it very easy for staff to assume I was one of them. Also, FYI, the school club handled the check-in process and seating assignments for the event. The service slash cleaning was handled by the school's facilities department or whatever. Bottom line, there was an apparent disconnect between the club and staff on knowing who was and who wasn't a guest. No one wore name tags, wristbands, etc. Anyways, turns out some of the servers saw me sitting at a table, assumed I was part of the crew, and thought I decided to stop working to enjoy the event. It got to the point where servers would give me weird looks as they laid the plates down at our table. But they didn't confront me or say anything, since it wasn't their place to do so. Oh, but they definitely made sure to point it out to the managers, multiple times by multiple staff members. At some point between the main course and dessert, while another speech was being given out in the background, someone came up from behind me and placed a hand on my shoulder. Before I had a chance to turn around and react, a male voice said, I need you to get up and step outside into the hallway with me right now. His hand slid down to my arm to get a decent grip, and I decided to get up and go along with it. I wasn't too surprised that this was happening, given the circumstances explained above. We've been treating this as a coincidental joke the whole time, so I thought it was kind of funny that I got the attention of the managers. I'm 6 foot 2 and he was about 5 foot 7 or so with a slim build. It looked like I had about 40 to 50 pounds on him, so I didn't feel uncomfortable with the way he was trying to handle the situation. To him I probably looked like some tall fit college bro that screws around all the time. I figured at most I would need to explain that I'm not a staffer, show my ticket for the event that was in my jacket pocket hanging on the chair, and sit back down, and we all laugh about it. No harm no foul, right? Nope, he pointed me to the nearest door, and let me lead the way out into the hallway. I figured I should just wait until we're in the hallway to calmly explain the situation and not cause a scene in front of other guests. I didn't grab my ticket or jacket in time, but whatever, I'm sure he'll give me a chance to show it to him while we talk. My friend slash girlfriend thought this was freaking hilarious, that this was happening, and assumed I would be back in a minute. We make our way into the empty hallway, and the manager shuts the door behind us. All doors had to be closed during the event to keep the noise inside. I asked him to let go of my arm and he does. Again, before I had a chance to say anything, and without skipping a beat, he starts blaring. 
I don't know who the heck you think you are, and I don't know what crossed your mind to think that on your first shift you can decide to take a break and engage with the guests. Sir, please let me. I don't give an SH what your stupid excuse is. It's common sense that staff don't sit down with the guests and engage with them. I don't care if this is just some part-time job for you while you're studying, I can replace you with five more students tomorrow for all I care. You show nothing but laziness, disrespect. During his rant, I noticed a campus security officer turn a corner and walk towards us. Oh, you gotta be effing kidding me. The manager keeps going on his rant, again, not letting me speak for myself. When the officer was standing next to us, he gives his big punchline. No, you're done. Fired. I don't want you in this building. I'm gonna put a word in with the school and have you barred from working another campus job. You're gonna end up explaining to your family why you couldn't last a single shift. Big oof. The officer takes his cue and starts to escort me to the nearest exit. The manager watches us until we turn the corner and goes back inside. I began explaining the situation to the cop from start to finish. At first he didn't want to believe me and thought I was trying to con my way out of trouble. Eventually he let me return to the room to grab my ticket, along with my DL, to match the names on both and prove that I'm just a guest. Some more talking later and after my friend and girlfriend vouched for me, the officer let me be and went off to talk to the manager. I assured the cop that I didn't feel the need to press charges and we sat back down. Everything else went by normal. We decided to go out and drink once the formal speeches and food service was over. We came back again the following year for another weekend of fun with another banquet night. I made sure to bring a shirt no service worker would wear. Thankfully, the next banquet was in a different building on campus. I don't know what if anything happened to the manager. Probably nothing. I didn't care about pressing charges or making a scene. I just like being able to tell this interesting story. U of M is still better than Michigan State. The next story is, I'm not your waitress, I'm your son's girlfriend. This was something that happened a long while ago when I first started dating my now fiancé. It came up in conversation the other day, as my fiancé's best man was threatening to put it in his speech, much to the embarrassment of my soon-to-be mother-in-law. My fiancé and I met at university, many, many miles away from his home city. We were in some of the same classes, and romance blossomed. We'd been a couple for a few months when he said that his parents were coming to see him and wanted to meet me as well. The plan was for us to all go out for dinner together the evening they arrived. However, my boyfriend had an unmissable meeting scheduled, just before we were meant to be leaving. We decided that I'd go ahead and meet them and be interrogated, and my boyfriend would try to hurry up the meeting and go straight from there. I caught the bus into town, however it was just my luck that it broke down halfway through the journey, meaning that I was about 15 minutes behind schedule. I caught my boyfriend just before his meeting to tell him, and he passed on the message to his parents, who replied almost instantly, saying that they were already in the restaurant and gave the location of their table so I could just join them when I got there. This restaurant was fancy-ish, you'd definitely wear smart casual clothing to dine there, and staff were all in similar dress of white shirt and blouse, pressed trousers and smart shoes. I was wearing the smartest dress I had, which was a dark red, definitely not uniform. I get there 10-ish minutes late and a little bit sweaty and out of breath and spotted my boyfriend's parents. I'd seen pictures of them so I knew what they looked like, sitting on a table. I put on a don't let them know your nervous smile and walked over there. This is the conversation that followed. Me. Hi there, sorry I'm late, it's lovely to meet you. Mother-in-law, oh, someone's already taken our drink orders, we'll be ready to order food when the rest of our party gets here. Me, I'm not your waitress, I'm my name, Beyonce's name's girlfriend, sorry for being late. My poor future mother-in-law turned the color of my red dress. She apologized for a good two minutes, while my future father-in-law had a fit of the giggles. It was not the most conventional way of meeting the in-laws, but it definitely broke the ice. It wasn't brought up when my boyfriend arrived, but I mentioned it afterwards, and it made him laugh too. Although it didn't have any lasting effect, my mother-in-law definitely doesn't want this announced at our wedding. The third story is, you're always a waitress. It doesn't matter what restaurant we're in. I'm a waitress at a local restaurant. On my day off, I scheduled a lunch date with a guy from school. Traffic was brutal, so he was running late. I was sitting at my table looking at the menu. Note, this is not the restaurant I work at. It isn't the same kind of food as the restaurant I work at. It's geographically nowhere near the restaurant I work at. A woman came up and took my menu out of my hands. Why are you just sitting here? We've been waiting for service for 45 minutes. No, they hadn't. They came in the same time I did 10 minutes ago, and they had already gotten drinks. Ma'am, I don't work here. I didn't recognize her at this point. Don't lie to me, you're a waitress. You served me just last week, don't you remember? I vaguely remember her coming into my restaurant now, because she complained her meal wasn't served with hot sauce, then sent it back because it was too spicy. I'm a waitress at local Mexican restaurant, but I'm not a waitress at local burger bar. She says, same difference, you're a waitress, get a pen and paper and take down our orders. I am a waitress but not here, I'm just trying to enjoy my lunch like you are. I am not employed here in any capacity. To which she replies, but you're a trained waitress and this place is clearly running behind, don't you people take an oath or something? A little bit of r slash malicious compliance kicked in 
because I rarely get to stand up to this kind of stupidity in my role as a server, because 99.9% .9 of the time, it happens while I'm actually at work. So, I went over to their table with a pen and paper for my backpack. I wrote down all their orders. I said it would be 45 minutes and to just sit tight. I even brought over the ketchup they asked for, just grabbed off another table. Then, I left. I texted my date to meet me at a place a few blocks over. The next day, the lady had called my boss at my actual restaurant, as well as totally unleashed on the manager at the restaurant I was dining at. I felt bad when I realized the tough spot I'd left the people who actually worked there in, so went back the next day to apologize and follow up on the aftermath. Thankfully, they were chill, and we had a great laugh over it. They were like, we were so confused, because she described the server with explicit details, but no one remotely like that works here, so we thought she lost her mind. My boss knew who I was from her description, and told him he takes this very seriously, and asked what day this occurred. Then when they told him, he said, you must be mistaken, because that's that server's day off and she wasn't here. After some irate yelling and screaming at my very friendly manager about how I still need to represent the restaurant wherever I go, she gave up. Now to just cross my fingers she doesn't come by my actual restaurant, haha. <laughs> the last story is, I already said I don't work for you, leave me be. This happened a few hours ago and I decided to post this here while it's still fresh in my memory. And also, here's the obligatory excuse, since English is not my primary language. Kinda important for this one. I live in Rio de Janeiro and had to sort some business downtown, and I was already making my way back home when I get approached by what I assumed was an American tourist. I think he must be American mostly because of his accent and how incredibly loud he was. Here's the cast, E.T., not the alien, just an entitled tourist. Me, molasses entity, i.e. myself. Entitled tourist, hey you kid, I need to go back to the hotel, drive me back there now. Me, noticing he was a tourist. I don't work for any hotels, and it's quite dangerous to ask strangers on the streets of a foreign country to take you anywhere. There's an information counter in this building where they may help you. Entitled tourist. No, I know you work for the redacted hotel, and I'll have your head if you don't take me back there this instant. Me. Sorry, but I already said I don't work for any hotels or for you. Excuse me. I made my way to the metro station, only to find out that the tourist followed me there, and he was mad. I sprinted to the turnstile, used my pass to get through it, and stopped to watch what happened to the tourist from the other side. He stopped chasing me right after I got through the turnstile and was gesturing obscenities at me, and while he was doing so, he left his backpack on the floor. Then in a godly act of instant karma, someone stole his backpack. I burst out laughing and got on the train and made my way home without any other incidents. I hope you like these stories, have a good one!